let's look now at how we can use Gibbs free energy in a practical sense when thinking about chemical reactions. Firstly, thing to notice is G is a state function. So H and S are state functions, therefore Gibbs free energy is a state function. This means that delta G for a process is equal to the sum of the delta G's for a set of sub-processes that add up to the process of interest. That's just Hess's law, and we've seen it so far for enthalpy and entropy already. So for example, if we have a process that converts state 1 to state 3 that we're interested in, and we have two sub-processes, 1 to 2 and 2 to 3, that add up to 1 to 3, then just like we did for enthalpy, we can imagine delta G for the 1 to 3 process is equal to the sum of the delta G's for 1 to 2 and 2 to 3. That's just Hess's law in action applied to the state function delta G. The standard free energy change of reaction is defined just like the standard enthalpy, except it's a free energy change instead of an enthalpy change. The change in enthalpy for one mole of reaction events under these standard conditions of one bar of pressure and 298 Kelvin unless otherwise stated. And as before, we can use formation reactions to form a standard set of delta G's as of formation. We can add, subtract, and scale these to get the free energy change of reaction for any process we might be interested in as long as we know delta G of formation for the reactants and products. If we think back to the standard formation reaction, it involves production of one mole of a compound from its elements in their standard states under the standard conditions. But we can also write these free energies of formation in terms of enthalpies of formation and entropies of formation, right? So we can either use tabulated or previously found free energies of formation to calculate the free energy of reaction, and that looks like this the idea of products minus reactants that we've seen before where, once again, I'll just mention it one more time, it's important to respect stoichiometry, so multiply by your stoichiometric coefficients as you're adding up delta G of formation for products and reactants. Or we can use the standard enthalpies of formation that we've already seen and the standard entropies to calculate the free energy of formation. Of a reaction. And that looks like this. Basically what we've done is separated out the delta H term and the T delta S term for the delta G of reaction, and we're looking at en enthalpies of formation and standard molar entropies now. So we use essentially our original, our original concept of Hess's law to find delta H of reaction for the process, and we use Hess's law applied to entropy to find delta S of reaction for the process, and combine the two using delta H minus T delta S to find delta G. This latter approach is actually more common, but the two approaches are theoretically equivalent. Finally, I want to close with answering this question. Why is Gibbs free energy called free energy? Well, let's go back to our concept of the second law. According to the second law, all processes must disperse energy somewhere, either within the system or the surroundings. And energy dispersal overall must be greater than the concentration of energy. The energy dispersed in a process is T delta S, and it's important to understand that that dispersal cannot do useful work. Remember our understanding of delta S as heat over temperature. T delta S essentially is a reversible heat. Heat transfer is random motion, and random motion is not coordinated or non-random motion. It's not useful work. So we can imagine at constant pressure the total energy of a system is its enthalpy, U plus PV. But because of the second law, only a certain amount of this energy is available to do useful work. The amount of, e of energy available to do useful work is U plus PV minus TS, where we're subtracting out this component that's going to be contributed to reversible heat in a process. So the free energy delta G for a process Remember, we've introduced the delta symbol here to show that free energy is changing. This is the energy that is available to do useful work on the surroundings when a process occurs within a system. It's the energy that's free in the sense of available to do useful work. And when delta G is greater than zero, the free energy represents the minimum amount of work or energy required to drive a process forward. In a sense, the surroundings must contribute energy to the system to drive a process forward that has delta G greater than zero.